Kids Online Service. Hi guys, nice to see you all. Without further ado, how about we start playing the games? Before we play, let us pray. And Bunny, you lead the prayer. Wait, why me? It's okay, Bunny, you can do it. Mm, okay then, friends, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessing. Soon we will start our service. It's blessed so we can focus well. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. 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 Let's play! Now, we play about cast the shadow. I will give you the picture of the shadow of animal and you guess it what animal it is. I give you 10 seconds. Are you ready kids? Come on, come on, let's play. I cannot wait. Me too. Friends at home, join us play so it will be more fun. Let's go, let's start. Okay, are you guys ready? Number one. What is it, yeah? What is it? It looks like my friend, one of my friends at the farm. Can, can you guess it? <gasps> yes, yeah, it's, it's cow. cow! It's a cow! Good right. job, now. Next the second one. Next. Ooh. I think... Meow! Is it? It's a bat. Yes. Meow! <gasps> it's so easy. It's a cat! Oh. Good, Good job! job. Like you, you bunny. bunny. If you, I think so. Let's check it out. Yes, yes! It's the rabbit. rabbit. You bunny. <gasps> what is it? It's you bad like me. <laughs> what it's is it? You be. It's me. Let's check it out. Are you guys at home? Can guess what is it? Oh, oh it's a ship. Okay, what is it? What is it? Oh, I think I know this animal. What is it, bunny? It's a chicken. Oh, <gasps> yeah, a rooster. Uh, yeah, almost. It's close. What is that? Kids, can you guess it? Oh, it's Bro, a buffalo! Yeah, Good buffalo. job! Okay, last one. The last, the last one. one. The last uh, one. I think I know this one. Let's count it. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a dog! This is a dog. Okay, okay. Good job, everyone! We had so much fun with so you guys! Fun. Mm, now I'm tired. Oh, what happened, Bunny? Why you look so weak and tired? Yes, Bunny, you are the one who invited us to play. But why are you so weak like this? Mm, it's because I didn't have breakfast this morning. Didn't Don't have your breakfast this morning. Don't you bring some rice or snacks with you? I don't bring any snacks with me because you guys know I like to jump here and there. If I bring my snack in my bag, it would be hard for me to jump. You didn't have your breakfast and you jump all around? Are you playing or want to lose weight? Bunny, bunny. I never miss breakfast because food is my fuel for me to walk, run, playing, and study. Yeah, but don't worry. Da -da 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 -da. I bring lunch and you wow. can eat it. Now. Okay. Thank you, Daisy, for the bread. Okay. So I'll eat first. Yeah. Okay. While waiting for Bunny to finish eating, let's praise God first. Let's go. Let's go.
showcase, let's raise this together. Let your luck shine. I'm gonna let my light shine. I'm gonna let my light shine. You're not scared. You're not scared. You're gonna let your light shine. You're gonna let light shine. We're not scared. We're not scared. We're gonna let our light shine. We're gonna let our light shine. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is gonna let light shine. Jesus gonna let your light shine. Let your light shine. Oh, 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 oh. let your light shine. friend of God and you friend of God so we are friend of God so let's praise Jesus together let's say who am I Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God I'm a friend of God He calls me friend I'm a friend of God I'm a friend of God I'm a friend of God He calls me friend Who am I that you are mindful of? Yes, you hear me when I call. It's it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God, He calls me friend I'm a friend of God I'm a friend of God I'm a friend of God, He 
Because we friend God Almighty Lord of glory You have called me friend God Almighty Lord of glory You have called me friend Jesus, 
I grow up knowing you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up serving you. I love you, Jesus. My life is saved by you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up knowing you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up knowing you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up serving you. I love you, Jesus. My life is saved by you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up loving you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up knowing you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up serving you. I love you, Jesus. My life is saved by you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up loving you. I love. I love you, Jesus. I grow up knowing you. I love you, Jesus. I grow up serving you. Jesus, my life is saved by you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up knowing you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up loving you. I'll never forget, never forget. I grow up loving you. It's let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for today. And now we will listen to your God's word more. I want to love you, God, more and more every day. So, God, open our heart and come inside us. And let your spirit fill me. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Shalom, Eagle Kids. Okay, today I want to share you share with you about bread and light. You know, every living thing needs nutrition. Like this plant here, this plant needs nutrition from the soil, from the sunlight. If it doesn't get the nutrition it needs, then it will wither out and it will eventually die. And it goes with any other plant, flowers, trees, even the grass on the field. They need some sort of nutrition from the soil and the sunlight. And, and that goes same with us. If we don't eat bread, bread as a representation of food, if we don't eat food, if we don't take enough nutrition, then we will become unhealthy. And if we starve for too long, then we will eventually die. So every living thing needs some kind of nutrition intake uh, in, ter in, in terms of food. And that goes, with, that goes the same with our soul. We need spiritual food for our soul. Just like the body, if we don't take the spiritual food, if we don't take enough of the spiritual food, then our soul will eventually wither out and our spirit will be dead. Not in terms of like dead as in death, but then we will be insensitive to the, to in our relationship with God. We'll be insensitive in hearing the word of God. Now, kids, do you eat? Of course you do. Of course you take, uh, you have breakfast, you have lunch, um, you have dinner, you have snacks, you have desserts. Of course you want more desserts but your mom and dad don't allow you to have more desserts, right? You need proper food intake, right? You need proper nutrition. Now, 
Imagine yourself going hungry for a long time. Don't you get cranky at the beginning? Don't you get a little bit, you know, angry? We call that hangry these days, right? Don't you get hangry, hungry, angry? And, you know, eventually, if you don't eat for too long, then you will feel that your physical strength get drowned. It, 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 it just, you know, diminishes, it decreases, right? We need to take In, we need to take nutrition. We need to take food for our physical body. Just like I explained before, like the plant, if you don't consume enough nutrition, then eventually, if you, if you starve for too long, you, you're going to die. That's why we need proper intake of nutrition. Now, it's very important for you to feed your spiritual, uh, feed your soul with your spiritual food. Just like you feed your body with the physical food, which we call bread as a representation of all food, you need to take spiritual food. And what is spiritual food? Spiritual food is the Word of God. But if you don't take the Word of God as your spiritual food, then you're not going to be receptive to God's Word. You're not going to be able to um, have this intimate relationship with God. And if you don't have that intimate relationship with God, if you cannot t maintain that intimate relationship with God, then your soul will eventually dry out. And you're not going to feel anything in your relationship with God. And that's the scary part because when you get to that stage, you're not going to be able to differentiate whether you're doing something right or you're doing something wrong. You're not going to be able to um, pray and then, you know, hear the Word of God uh, from the Holy Spirit because your spiritual state is too dry for you to hear anything from the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to imagine this. I want you to think about this. Which is more important, your physical body or your soul? I would say your soul is more important because your physical body only lasts while you're on this earth, but your soul lasts for, forever, whether up in heaven or down in hell. It will last forever. So what lasts forever is more important than what lasts only temporary. And just like you take care of your physical body with your physical food, isn't it much more important for you to feed your spiritual side, your soul, which lasts forever. Reading the Word of God, it means feeding your soul. Reading the Word of God is feeding your soul. What happens? What happens when we don't read the Bible every day? What, if, what happens if we don't soak ourselves into the Word of God every day? It's same as you're not eating every day. We become dull. We become less sensitive. You know, I remember when I don't read the Bible, when I skip reading the Bible for a few days, because I, I mean, I have reasons not to. I've been busy. I've been tired. But whatever the reason is, if I skip reading the Word of God every day, and it lasts for like a couple of days or even like three, four days, then I would feel dry. I would feel that my, my prayer is somehow not really connecting with God. I would feel that um, my heart, I, I, I feel that my heart gets drier and drier. I feel like um, there's less love in me. I feel like I'm lazy to serve. I feel like I get lazy to uh, go to CG or, or go to sun Sunday service. So you get drawn back. You get drawn back from the presence of God if you don't feed yourself with the Word of God every day. And I'm, I'm telling you this based on my experience. So eventually, eventually, if you don't, if, if you don't um, eat the Word of God every day, like if your soul doesn't eat the Word of God every day, then what happens is eventually you will, uh, you will compromise. You will start to compromise things and you will start to sin. You, you will ha somehow get to the point where sin, you know, little sin is acceptable. Disobeying your parents a little bit here and there is acceptable. You know, um, putting a curse word 
on your mouth a little bit, it becomes acceptable. You see, sin sneaks in because when your heart is dry, it's easier for the sin, it's easier for the devil to sneak in, to drop that sinful thought in your mind because your heart is dry, because you haven't been feeding yourself, your soul is weak. So it's very easy for the devil to just drop something in there and you take it. You see, maintaining your physical body, your physical health is very important, right? Much more important when it comes to your soul. Maintaining the, the spiritual health of your soul is more important than maintaining the physical health of your body. Now, there are two main purposes that we will address today. Two main purposes on uh, the, the two main purposes of God's word in our lives. Okay, the first purpose, the word of God acts as bread of life for us. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, uh, I'm reading the uh, NLT version. It says, But Jesus told them, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus said, People don't live by bread alone, meaning people don't live by food alone. You see, people don't live by maintaining their physical health alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. People live by the word of God. That's what Jesus said. Okay? Every word that comes out from the mouth is the food for our soul. Jesus saying that it's more important that we feed our soul than to feed our body, right? That's why we have uh, fasting, for example. You fast food, right? But you never fast Word of God. It shouldn't be the other way around. You don't fast the Word of God and you, uh, you satisfy yourself with uh, steak. Okay? It should be the other way around. You, you fast the food, you never fast the Word of God. Okay? We cannot fast the Word of God. You know, it's very important, especially in your age group, um, it's very important that you guys eat well, physically, okay? It's very important you guys eat nutritious food. Very important. Um, but what's more important is that you never skip feeding your soul every day. That's more important. Why? Like I said, soul is eternal. Body is temporary. Maintain and take good care of what's eternal first. In the Bible... There's a story of a young man who loved God and he loved to read the Word of God. He loved to meditate on God's Word and he loved to worship God. His name is David. We're talking about the young little David before he, he grew up too old. <laughs> he was a shepherd boy. Okay, he was just a simple uh, shepherd boy. God says about him, David is the man after my own heart. That's what God says about David. That's how much David loved to meditate on God's Word. That's how much David loved to eat the Word of God. David was living by God's Word. His soul, his, David's soul, was uh, full of spiritual food because he would just spend time just worshiping and meditating on God's Word every day, every day. Now, let's take a look at the story about David and how God's word became a bread of life for him. David had eight brothers, and he was the youngest in the family. His father's name was Jesse. Every day, David would take care of his father's sheep in Bethlehem, which was a town he was from. And David's three older brothers were in a war against Philistines with King Saul at the time. One day, Jesse asked David to go and check on his three older brothers who were in a war to see if they were doing okay. Jesse said, take this basket of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they're doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelite army at the valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. 
So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse had directed him. When David arrived at the battlefield where the Israelite army was, he saw that the Israel, Israel army was in fear of a giant soldier from the Philistines army called Goliath. As soon as the Israelite army saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. They said to each other, have you seen the giant? He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge re reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. So David went to talk to King Saul, and he told him about how he fought against lions and bears to protect the sheep, and that he can fight Goliath as well. David said, The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Then Saul, uh, when Saul heard David, he finally consented da David to go and fight Goliath. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield, a shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the name of his gods. Come over here, and I will give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to, to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Now as Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then the man of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph. David was little, yet he was able to triumph over the giant Goliath. How? Because David had a close relationship with God. He loved to worship God and read the word of God, that's why, when he was facing Goliath, he remembered that God was a source of his strength. The Word of God is our spiritual food. We can find God's promises and empowering words when we are facing difficult difficulties. For example, when we are going through a difficult difficulty because one of our family members is sick, we remember God's promise in Jeremiah 33, verse 6, Nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. Or when we remember such promise from God, we are strengthened to face hard situations in life. So, that was a story about David defeating Goliath. We learned that David remembered the Word of God and he was empowered by the Word of God because David meditated on God's word every day prior to this battle, he did not fear the challenge he was facing. For him, the challenge he was facing was smaller than his God because he knew his God because he meditated on the God's word, uh, on the word of God every day. He knew who his God was. Meditating on God's word made David love God even more. So because he loved God even more, he wanted to meditate on God's word even more. You see that you get into this positive cycle when you do this. David knew God was with him because God keeps his promise. And David knew this. Now, the second or the number two purpose of God's word in our lives is that word of God is the lamp to our life. The first point was bread. God's word was, is bread, uh, of our, bread of life for us. The second point, the second purpose of God's word is that God's word is the lamp to our life. Now, have you ever been in a pitch black, just totally dark room where you can't see anything? Maybe um, suddenly 
a light went off in your room and you, you, for a moment you have this pitch darkness because your eyes are used to the light, right? The first thing when this happens that you would do is to try to find the light switch so you can turn on the light or you, can try to, you will try to find a flashlight you know, or, or you want to turn on the flashlight on your phone or something. Why would you do that? Why? Because if you don't do that, if you can't see anything and you want to walk around in the room, right, or you want to do some kind of activities in the room, you will definitely uh, hit something, stumble on something. Um, you might injure yourself. It's, it's just going to be too dangerous for you to do anything um, active there. So walk, walking in the darkness, okay, walking around in the darkness is dangerous. Not because there's a monster or something. No, it's just you might hit something. You might fall on somewhere. And it's just you, you're going to injure yourself, right? And the same thing. If we walk in the darkness in the course of our life, I'm telling you, it's dangerous. You need to walk in the light. If, you're, if the walk of your life is in the darkness, right, you might stumble on something. You would definitely injure yourself along the way. It's just a matter of time. That's why we need Word of God, which is a lamp to our life. The lamp, lamp to our life that lightens our path in our life so that we don't stumble on something, right? In Psalms 119, verse 105, in NLT version, it says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. This means God's word is the guidance, of our, guidance to our life. God's word guides our life in the light so that we don't stumble on anything, right? God's word is the lamp. Okay? It's the lamp that lights my feet. Now, this means if you don't have God's word, then your life is going to be in darkness. Like I said, and in the darkness, if you're trying to navigate your way, you might fall, on, you might fall, you might injure yourself, you might stumble on something, right? With that, that, what that means is, you know, you can easily fall into sin. You can easily compromise. You can uh, make foolish mistakes that you don't have to make. You, you're going to have to pay uh, the consequence, which you don't have to pay. Just because you're walking in the darkness and you stumble and you make foolish mistakes and you have to pay for that consequence, right? It's totally unnecessary. You're just, just a waste of time. So, but, you know, so many people, so many people in the world live like this because they don't have the Word of God in them. They don't read the Word of God. They don't meditate. Uh, they don't meditate the Word of God. They don't worship God. They don't have this intimate time with God. So, guys, the Word of God is not only the bread of life for your soul, but it is the lamp to light your path. It the light shines before your feet so you don't fall into anything. It's very, very visible and very clear, right? If you have the Word of God in you, then you become wiser. You know, it's not, some, it's not a surprise, right? You walk, you're walking, and you're, if you're walking in the darkness, then you wouldn't know what's ahead of you. But if you're walking in the light, you would see what's ahead of you. And you only acknowledge what's ahead of you. And that makes you a wiser man, a wiser girl, a wiser, wiser boy. And when you have the Word of God in you, you become aware of what is right and what is wrong. Because it, it becomes very simple. And you fall in love with God even more, like David did. So you don't want to... You don't want to not read the Bible, but you want to spend time reading the Bible because you fall in love with God more and more. And when you read the Bible, when, you, when the Word of God is in you, you're guided by God's Word in your life. God's Word lights your path ahead of you because God's Word acts as the lamp to guide your life. When God's Word is a lamp to guide your feet. 
God's word becomes your standard of, of living, right? So when you get angry at somebody, you remember, you suddenly remember, Holy Spirit just puts it there for you because you've been reading, you've been meditating. Holy Spirit says, um, you should love your neighbor. Okay, you should love your enemies. Or, or when you're tempted, let's say, like when, you, when you're tempted to lie, right? When you're tempted to lie, God says, do not be a false witness. You, get, you just suddenly remember these, right? And when we want to uh, rebel against our parents, God says, obey your parents. You see, when we, you know, we, we as a human being, we have a tendency to rebel. We have a tendency to go get sidetracked. We want to do things our ways, right? But the Word of God keeps us in the right path so that we don't deviate from this, right? God's word becomes the ultimate standard of our life. That's why, that's why God's word is the light, the uh, lamp that lights our feet, lamps that guides our feet, because God's word just you know takes us through this course of life, always on the right track, always in His righteousness. Now, we know two purposes of God's word in our lives. Now, okay, first was that God's word is uh, bread of life. Second, uh, God's word is the lamp that lights our feet. Okay? Why do we need God's word in our lives? Because first, bread, okay, the food for our soul, just like we need food for our body, we need food for our soul. We need nutrition for our soul. That's why we need to read the word of God. That's the function of the, of the word of God in our life. The first function. The second function, the second purpose of God's word in our lives is the lamp, right? We need guidance. We don't know what's coming ahead of us, what's coming in the future. We don't know whether this decision that we're making is the right thing or the wrong thing. We don't know what's going to happen in our future. We need guidance. We cannot walk in the darkness. It's too obvious, right? That's why you need, you and I both, we need the light in our life that guides us through. Okay? So we cover two functions, two purposes of the Word of God in our lives. Now, I want to close with this little tips about reading the Bible. How, how can you read the Bible um, so that you can stick to it? How can you build a habit of reading the Bible so that the Word of God, you know, fills your soul, satisfies your soul, and then Word of God gives you the, gives you the light, you know, guides you through, through your life. Okay, first, I want you to start with uh, singing worship songs to worship God before you read the Bible. Just sing a simple song. Um, a simple song that I can think of is, a, you know, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Something like that. Or, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to whom to him be we belong. Or something like that. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. You know, something, anything, anything simple is fine. Okay, you don't even have to have a guitar. You don't, ha you don't have to uh, play piano. You can just sing along. Just you and God, one on one. Just sing a simple song to worship God. Now, second, you can start reading one chapter a day, and one chapter of the Bible a day. It's not that hard, okay? If you can play a computer game, a mobile game for two hours a day, you can definitely afford 15 minutes of your day to read one chapter of the Bible. 20 minutes, including worship. I'm sure you can afford that. Three, make a habit of writing down your rama words. You know, rama means uh, something that you got, something that you strongly felt, something that you learned when you read the Word of God. Okay, that's Rama word. So build a habit of writing it down, taking a little note, or you can use your phone, okay, to uh, write a memo, okay? And, and just have a note of your Rama words which the Holy Spirit dropped in your heart. Just get, into, get in the habit of writing it down. You know, I used to, I used to write a journal every night uh, when I was reading the Bible, I would have my notebook on my side and I will have my date on it. And then there's like a one 
verse that stands out the most, that I feel like strongly attached to it the most, then I will write it down on my notepad. And then I will start write down what comes in my head. And it was like a letter to God. It was like, dear God, I read this today. And I, I learned this. Oh, apparently you love me so much. Apparently I'm so precious in your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. I would write this like a, a page or a page and a half letter every day to God. And that's when actually, um, that's the time that God taught me the most. That I, I experienced a, a huge increase in my faith. And that's when I experienced um, so many miracles. That was the beginning stage of my walk with Jesus right after I repented. Okay, I strongly urge you guys to write that down. Write your Ramah words down. Okay, number four, don't give up reading the Bible when you come across something you don't understand. There are tons of things you wouldn't understand in the Bible. There are so many numbers in the Bible that you wouldn't understand that would just make you fall asleep. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep reading. Okay? Just use your finger and then just keep reading it word by word, even if you don't understand. It's okay. Just read it. Okay? Sooner or later, the Holy Spirit will tell you what it means. The Holy Spirit will tell you how significant the passage you've just read that you didn't understand is. Okay? So don't worry about it. It's up to God it's to, te to teach you. As long as you don't give up, eventually you will understand. Number five, after reading the Bible, close it with a prayer. Just close your, close your Bible and just pray a simple prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for um, your word that you poured upon me. Thank you for filling me up. Thank you for, thank you for feeding my soul. Thank you for being so close to me. Thank you for, um, thank you for your word available for me. Okay, just give a simple prayer like that. Give thanks to God. Praise the Lord and say amen. And that's a, that's a very simple way to uh, read the Bible from the beginning to the end. You, know, you start with a worship song and then um, you pray and then you read one chapter. And then if there, when you get a rema, you write it down. And then when you come across something you don't understand, just keep going, never give up. And then you end that one chapter with a simple prayer. Okay? Now, let's deliberately and intentionally make time to read the Bible every day. Okay? Not in your spare time. Okay? God does not deserve your spare time. God deserves your best time because God gave you the best. Okay? So let's make time intentionally to read the Bible every day. Okay? Let's, um, let's all say, I love my Bible because God's Word is like bread and light. One more time, I love my Bible because God's word is like bread and light. Let me close in prayer for you. I want you to just close your eyes, bow your heads, and let the Holy Spirit just touch you and speak to you while I pray for you. Thank you, Father. I pray for every child that are watching this right now. I pray that you would move their hearts so that they would deliberately and intentionally make time to spend time with you. The Bible is full of love messages and promises to each child. So personal. Let everybody watching this video take time to understand your heart by digging through the Bible. Let them enjoy their time with you when they read the Bible because your word is the bread and light for their soul and their life. Jesus, when they come across something, a difficult passage, and they don't understand it, Lord, give them wisdom to understand those things that they didn't understand. And Father, when they read the Bible, Speak to them. Give them the Rama word so that they will learn something personal from you. Thank you, Lord. We know that your word is alive. Your word is alive. And when we read your word, we, we 
can become closer to you, intimate with you, and your word will transform our lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this bread and light for our soul and our life. We love you, Jesus. And let me close uh, the whole thing in, in one simple prayer as well. Father, I thank you for tonight, uh, for, for this video. I thank you for um, bringing every child to watch this video. It's not a coincidence that they are watching this. But through this video, we pray that every child, every heart, will be, will be transformed, Lord. Build their faith up. Build their faith up, God. Let them know that you're there for them. Embrace them. Hug them. Let them know that you love them. For every child is precious. Thank you, Jesus. Let everybody watching this, let their heart be drawn to you and let them desire you more than anything. Thank you for your presence upon them. Thank you for your anointing and your blessing upon them surrender every child that are watching this into your hands they're yours God claim them I declare all these prayers in Jesus name hallelujah amen God bless you all
I love my Bible because God's word is like bread and light. Let's say it one more time with us. I love my Bible because God's word is like bread and light. Yeah, God's word is not only we not only need food for our body, but for our life. Yep, that's right. Wow, I learned a lot from you guys today. Thank you. You're, You're welcome, welcome Bunny. Now, don't please, and don't be sad. Okay, we meet again at Eagle Kiss Online Service next week. See yep. you and God bless you.